Hi there. We're back with another tutorial. Now, there was an issue with the previous video I uploaded that there was no sound on it. Uh, we also took a little bit of an absence because my mic exploded, but we're back now. And today we're going to be doing uh, some fun with the multiband send tool, which I've got loaded up here in the bottom track. And let's get right into it. So, what is the multiband send tool? It is basically your vanilla send, which will send to a send track, uh, multiplied three times. So you've got three of them, and they are split by frequency. So you've got uh, the ability to send to up to three uh, distinct send tracks and process those under uh, those different frequencies that are uh, split by the uh, sliders here. And as you can see, uh, you can kind of click and drag them and it'll adjust the settings. Um, the other option you have is also this type, which is the filter steepness between the settings. So LR2 would be a looser filter and then they get progressively steeper. So we have a number of settings here and um, probably the best thing to do would be to uh, just get right into it and show you a couple examples of what I've done with this multiband sand. So I'll play to you, uh, to you uh, a bit of the dry sound. So as you can hear, it's just a basic sort of uh, Reese sound. And I've got it pre-routed into the multiband send. And we will just turn the top two off right now. And I'll show you what I've set up. So um, the original sound. And when I turn this on, it's just being sent uh, into the low frequency component. That's what this first send track is set up. And what I've done there is I've just put a stereo expander uh, machine that will collapse it to the mono and a bus compressor, which will, um, you know, compress the sound a bit and make it a bit more even. So we have a, uh, you know, a nice powerful uh, bass sound that isn't going to have any stereo phasing issues or anything like that. So it can be useful for that kind of thing when you're trying to collapse things down to mono and you don't want it to use a lot of external VSTs or, or something like that. So for the second one, um, we will sort of add it in and I'll show you what I've done there. So you can hear a little bit of modulation. I've got some filter automation. I've got some distortion and I've got a phaser. So you can also see that it can be used for sound design. You can have s different effects affecting different frequencies of the signal. So the mid range is now being heavily processed with these effects. And then let's bring in the third one. And that one, we have a cabinet simulator and a reverb. So you can see there that uh, the reverb is now being processed in only the high frequencies. So that keeps a lot of mud out of your mix. And then you can also add different types of distortion or filtering or anything uh, to get a different flavor of sound across the entire spectrum. So that makes it a very powerful technique. Now, there's another thing I like to do, and I'm just going to insert another insert another track, not delete one. Um, this makes it uh, very useful if you have uh, sort of a uh, let's just set up a, a very basic uh, bass sound um, in here. <laughs> Okay, so 
Okay. And then we'll just do some stuff here to make it a little less. So we have our nice, powerful sort of uh, old school sounding bass. And one of the things you might want to do is uh, if you have a, a bass sound or whatever, um, but you want to give it a little more kind of ambience, um, we can put in uh, a reverb plugin on here. And then we'll just uh, give it sort of uh, one of these um, ambience pl uh, presets just for the sake of speed. And then we want to keep all these settings and put this down a bit. So what we have now is I'm making it super obvious but it adds a little bit of ambience to the top end uh, and for bass mixes uh, it definitely uh, can give you a little bit of reverb or, or a little a little bit of reverb or a little bit of space to the top end of the sound and give it a little bit more three-dimensional depth without cluttering up uh, the top end of your mix. Um, I'm making it super obvious in this example. I've got this a little bit lower than I normally would set it um, and definitely like higher send amounts but uh, in the context of a mix when you're doing this across multiple channels and you've got uh, you know bass sounds that are uh, that are taking up large portions of the mix, it can definitely add a little bit of extra something. And you can use this with all sorts of different effects. Um, not only that, but uh, say we wanted to You, you just get like incredibly powerful and subtle sound design options uh, from doing this. So multiband send, a very, very cool tool that's built into Renoise that can give you a lot of really, really awesome ways to shape your sound. So try it out, see what uh, you can do with it, and have fun Renoising. See you next time.